Welcome to the guide on how to complete a notification form on the self-service portal. The provider logs into the self-service portal and is presented with the portal landing page. The provider wishes to complete a notification form and they select the Manage Your Organisation tile. On the Manage Your Organisation page, the provider can initiate a notification form by selecting the Begin Notification Form button. On the Notifications Workspace page, the provider is able to view the Before You Start information, which includes sections for privacy and your personal information, notice of collection and who can approve and submit this form. The provider wants to notify an organisational change and selects the Add button from the Organisational Changes section. From the list of organisational change options, the provider selects the Change to Organisations Governance option and then selects the Next button. On this page, the provider selects Board or Governance Committees as the type of organisation's governance change. The provider then fills out the fields for this change which includes the detailed statement describing the change that has occurred, the upload of any supporting documents, the date when the change came into effect, reason for the change, and how the change affects the suitability of the approved provider. The provider then selects the Complete button and is taken back to the Notifications Workspace page. From this page, the provider wishes to notify of a key personnel change and selects Add from the Key Personnel Changes button. From the list of options, the provider selects the Add as a new key personnel option. Note that the provider is also able to select to update a key personnel's details, cease all key personnel roles, and also report on suitability as key personnel. For the purpose of this recording, the provider only selects the Add as a new key personnel change and then selects the Next button. The provider then searches for a contact through the first name and last name fields, selects Search, which returns no matches. The provider then selects the option to create a new contact record for the person above and add them as a key personnel, and then selects the next button. On the Add Personal Details page, the provider enters the personal details of the new contact. This includes the title, first name, last name, and date of birth, and then selects the next button. On the Add Position Details page, the provider enters the position details, which includes position title, date they started as a key personnel, principal purpose of key personal position, duties of position, employment type, main contact number and email, and then selects the next button. On the Add Individual Screening Check Details, the provider selects the type of background check that has been completed. Have you received the outcome of the worker screening check, NDIS worker screening check number, NDIS worker screening check expiry date, and upload of the worker screening check number. Once the document has successfully uploaded, the provider then selects the Next button. On the Add Insolvency Check Details page, the provider completes the following fields, which include date the insolvency check was completed, the search ID, and upload of the insolvency check document. Once the document has successfully uploaded, the provider then selects the Next button. On the Add Disqualification Details page, the provider answers the following question regarding the disqualification status of the key personnel and then selects the Next button. On the Add APRA Registration Details page, the provider then completes the following fields. Are they currently registered with APRA? Are they responsible for nursing services? Registration type, registration number, the copy of the APRA certificate, whether the key personnel's name is different to the one shown on the APRA registration, and the copy of the statutory declaration. Once the document has been successfully uploaded, the provider then selects the Next button. On the Add Membership of Governing Body Details page, the provider completes the following field. Is the key personnel a member of your governing body or quality care advisory body? In this scenario, the key personnel is not, and the provider selects the Next button. On the Add Qualifications page, the provider answers the following questions regarding relevant qualifications. Do they have any qualifications relevant to the position held? the name of the qualification, educational facility, and date obtained. The provider then selects the Next button. On the Add Relevant Experience page, the provider would complete the following fields. Do they have any experience relevant to the position held? Name of the employer, role title and description, role commencement date, and role cease date. Once done, the provider then selects the Complete button and is taken back to the Notifications Workspace page. The provider now wishes to submit the notification form for review. 
On the Notifications Workspace page, the provider can add an authorised representative and a governing person. The provider selects the Edit button on the Authorised Representative box and is able to enter the details of the Authorised Representative, which includes full name, role, position, phone and email, and then selects Confirm. The provider then selects the Edit button on the Governing Person box and is able to select a governing person from the list of governing persons available at the organisation and then selects Confirm. The provider then selects the View Summary button and is then taken to the Summary of Changes page. On the Summary of Changes page, the provider can review the notification and then selects the Send for Review button. The provider then sees the confirmation page stating that the notification has been sent to the governing person for review and submission. And that's how a provider staff organisation user can complete a notification in the self-service portal.